I'm speaking again next Sunday. After that, I'm done because I actually only have four sermons. So we're we're going to be in trouble right here for sure. My name is Larry Green, and I work at Johnson University as special assistant to the president, and I work on both campuses. So I commute uh, from Shosemi uh, to uh, Knoxville uh, once, once a week. A little history about my relationship with Ed. So he was a senior at uh, Johnson Bible College then, and I was a freshman, and I had uh, no socks, uh, long hair, and uh, so Eddie was assigned to me as my mentor. So everything that takes place during this sermon is Eddie's responsibility. Uh, so if it's okay, it works. If not, all right. Joshua, Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded him. In Joshua 6, Joshua 1 <coughs> through chapter 6, it tells about Joshua taking over the kingdom. After the years with Moses, the wilderness experience, the battles, the many years of teaching that Joshua experienced under Moses, and the death of Jesus, Joshua was chosen to lead the most cared for nation that has ever existed. If anyone had a right to panic at this point in time and fear of the day, it was Joshua. Listen to these three points. 30 days of weeping and mourning. 30 days. 603,550 people are out there weeping and mourning. We don't do much mourning at funerals anymore. But in the early days and in this time, it was a time of great, great sadness. There was no email, unfortunately, no cell phone, or no Google Maps. Joshua had to feel that he was just pretty much on his own. If I were Joshua, here's what I would want to know. How to organize the people for the most effective crossing of the river. They, they've got to cross a river. How to cross the river without losing someone in the current. How to prepare the people for the adventures which await them. He remembers the times of doubt on the part of the people. So, Joshua is expecting some serious guidance from God. And here's what God says. Verse 6, chapter 1, verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. So, if I was Joshua and God had spoken to me, Although I trust God, love God, I would have said, that's it? I mean, that's it? You're just saying, be strong and courageous? That's all you expect from me? That's what God has said. God, though, gave these three elements to Joshua. Joshua stood ready to lead the people. God gave him three changeless elements, which exist still today that will help Joshua accomplish leading the people into the promised land. The first element is God's word. In Joshua 1, 7 through 9, here's exactly what he says. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, and you may be successful wherever you go. The progression went like this. Know and understand the book. I mean, that's, that's reviewing it. Practice the book, that's modeling it, and then communicate the book, teach. 
love the word, learn the word, live the word. So, so what is this about? I've never seen this. Who's who's doing this? We have several groups that are doing this. Several groups. Groups. Yes. God told Joshua, "Don't let the book depart from you. Live the word. Read the word." study the word. 1968. Myra and I are in senior Bible class, Johnson Bible College. The professor comes in, Dr. Clark, and says, here's the assignments for the class. Number one, keep a notebook of the class lectures. Now that's no problem for me. I'm dating Myra, who is far smarter than I am. So I could just review her notes. <laughs> I didn't say copy. I said review her notes. <laughs> Number two, we're going to have some pop quizzes. You won't know when they're coming. We're going to have them. So you need to be ready. Number three, we're going to have a, a semester final and then an end of year final. Okay, I got all this. I got all this. I can do that. I've made it this far as a senior. I surely can make it this one last class. And then he said, well, <coughs> this is a long well. You need to read the book of Acts 50 times before the end of the semester. That's 28 chapters times 50 adds up. If my math is correct, and I'm a minister, so it's probably not, but I think it's 1,400 chapters. Well, he didn't know my schedule. I had to get up at 7 in the morning for Greek and go through classes. We had chapel every uh, day at Johnson in those early years. Then after chapel, uh, there were more classes. Then at 3 o'clock, I went down to the dairy to milk cows. I worked my way through Johnson University milking cows. Now, if you ask me, I would tell you it got utterly disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't <laughs> ask. Let it go, let it go. Uh, but we did have, and this has never been shared publicly, uh, we, we named all the girls, uh, the cows, uh, for the girls in the dorm. There was Donna, Deidre, Myra, Myra made it as well because I was there. So after, after that, we had to go to chapel. It's now 7 o'clock. So what we would do, Johnson had a balcony just like that right there. We would go into that balcony with our rotten, smelly, dirty clothes on. And that aroma, we were, I don't know how we didn't get expelled. That aroma would, would pass down off that balcony in, into the audience. <laughs> People would be looking and wondering what's going on. <laughs> At the end of the semester, Dr. Clark took the role of maybe 20 people in the class. And the combination, uh, no one read it 50 times. No one. He closed his grade book and said this. When you get out of here, you're going to have time to prepare sermons, marry people, bury people, counsel people, and serve in a hundred other tasks, which will always be taking you away from your priority as a Christian was to spend time in the Word. At the end of his life, Joshua 23, 6, he challenges the people, be strong, be careful, to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or the left. Joshua, a man who certainly took uh, that challenge uh, too hard and lived with it. When Joshua and the children of Israel are ready to cross the Jordan and enter the land, he will experience the second changeless element. The second element is God's power. So first of all, the book, changeless. God's power, changeless. And 
verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water, they had the water uh, from upstream stopped flowing. The priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing of the dry ground. As Joshua stood on that bank, what has to be going <coughs> through his mind? It is a, a, a mind that remembers that when Moses and he were standing at the Red Sea, he saw it part. So there are three things that happen here. Number one, Moses saw the Red Sea part. Joshua is seeing the Jordan part. They're walking on dry ground, crossing the ocean, the sea, and now the people are on dry ground again. God's power was present with Moses. God's power is present with Joshua. It, and it is to this point today. I, I, I was impressed with your prayer time. Some churches we go in and we're in every Sunday. It's like, Father, thank you very much for the day that you're in God. And I, I compliment you for giving your request, which is a point of saying you understand the power of God, and then praying for those individually as part of the power of God. God has made the sure, the Old Testament and two New Testament, that he provided plenty of illustration of his overwhelming power. He left nothing to wonder regarding his power to change the course of history. <clears throat> and it just takes a quick review of both the Old Testament and the New Testament to see the many illustrations of his power. God is mighty in his protection of his children. The Psalms teach that God's strength and readiness to protect us. When we feel powerless, the almighty power of God is reassuring. Psalm 8, I don't have that memorized, <clears throat> but here, here it is. O Lord, O Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. You have set your majesty above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have drawn a defense against your foes to silence enemies and revenge. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what are humans that you are mindful of them? Mere mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them less than a god, crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them rule over the works of your hands. Put all things at your feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the sea. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how awesome is your name. <laughs> Sorry. That's point two power. Third element is changeless leader. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him <coughs> with his drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for your enemies? Neither, he replied, or, uh, but as commander of the Lord of... <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> um, I have come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground and reference. Same thing. Same thing happened with Moses at the burning bush. Burning bush, Jericho held sign. Holy ground, holy ground. If I'm Joshua, I'm going to be asking this. What's it going to take to, to get through those walls and, and have a victory in Jericho? Here's what the, the guy says. Take off your sandals. 
for the place where you are standing is holy, and Jesus did. Oh, oh, there's no forgiveness. I mean, there is all forgiveness. And they're all happy you did that. <laughs> I need to draw this out another 10 minutes, don't I? Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. okay. <coughs> it says, uh, this, this guy, he meant, says, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing and is holy. And again, I'm Joshua. I'm going, that's it. I take off my shoes and we're going to be able to to beat Jericho, it shows the changeless leader. Burning bush, Jericho hills. Holy ground, holy ground. Take off your shoes, take off your shoes. Joshua, a man who faced the unknown, a man who trusted the Lord to work through him to fulfill the task which he had been given. He was not in his adventure alone, and neither are we. We, what is your unknown? So I'm in the fifth or sixth grade at Washington, Indiana. We just had a serious snow. My dad went out and bought a sled. You, you, maybe you from Ohio know what a sled is, maybe. A sled? A, a sled. Oh, good. There's two people. How many people actually have ridden a sled? Oh, okay, okay. I feel bad. I feel bad. So uh, I'm in my room. He says, "Go, go get, go get ready." And I'm excited. And my dad says to my mother, "I remember this clearly. I'm going to take him to Dead Man's Hill." And my mother, as clear as it was 65 years ago, she says, that will work. At that point, I was wondering what was going on with them. I thought I had been a good kid up to fifth and sixth grade. But however, that seemed to be coming to an end as my dad took me sledding to Dead Man's Hill. So we weaved through there and we got out to Dead Man's Hill, which is at a golf course. And there are other parents there who have brought their kids to Dead Man Hill. We get out of the car and here's what we hear. I hear, ah! Oh, he probably won't be in class tomorrow. Oh! And then there were broken sleds. So Jeff, my, my dad said, come on, come on, it'll be okay. Yeah, right, I know what's going on here. So we get to the edge of Dead Man's Hill. You cannot see the bottom. It's dark. It's scary. I'm scared. I have no courage. And then it happened. My dad laid down on the sled, and I thought, wow, this is going to be a reverse. And then he said, get on. <laughs> Suddenly, what did I have? I have courage. So he said, push and jump on. I pushed and jumped on, and man, we went straight down that hill. We were flying. And we hit the smooth spot, he said, roll off, roll off, or we'll go in the lake. Oh, I rolled off and he rolled off. He changed uh, the whole spirit of that. And, and do you understand? It seems kind of a simple illustration, but in times of concerns and worry, uh, God's down on the sled, welcoming us to ride along with him. Courage is the quality.
quality of mind or spirit that enables you to face difficulty with firmness and without fear. Discouragement leads to fear and fear to defeat. These three elements that were given, the changeless book, the changeless power, the changeless leader, all were designed to help us live this life with courage. Matthew 28, 18 says, All power is given unto me, that's Jesus, in heaven and in earth. He is the one who is working out his plan, and he is the one who will give us the guidance needed. Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. I've been weary before. And exercise increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fail. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will faint, walk, and not be faint. Yesterday on Facebook, uh, Mr. Eddie, as I'll call him, uh, was was walking without his his walker. That's a big deal. And I think uh, he has, through all of this experience, uh, uh, walk, talk, live on wings of eagles. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded him. Joshua, a man who illustrates to us uh, we must have and can have courage as we face the moment. Our decision hymn is today is 306, Jesus, 